Now looking around the farm, there are many introduced or invasive species, and I'm thinking about looking at several of them in future videos, but for today, I wanted to look at this tree, one with the orange flowers. Uh, while we normally look at native trees on this channel, I thought it'd be good to look at one that's non-native as well, so we can see its effects. So this tree is scattered throughout many islands in the Philippines and also throughout the tropics around the entire world. This is the African tulip tree. It's native to parts of Africa. It's a beautiful tree and it grows very easily. So it's been used both as an ornamental tree and in the past it was even recommended for reforestation purposes in the Philippines and many other parts of the world. Unfortunately, as time has gone on, the negative impacts of the tree have become more obvious. In this video, I wanted to explore these and the invasive nature of this tree. Uh, the Philippines DENR and Biodiversity Management Bureau classify the African tulip tree as invasive. Like many classifications, the term invasive can vary depending on who's providing the definition. But in general, it tends to refer to a species that was introduced to an area which causes ecological or economic harm. And that harm outweighs the benefits provided by the species. Uh, additionally, the species will usually be able to reproduce and spread in an uncontrolled manner in its environment. So often these species are brought to an area unknowingly, hitching a ride as people and goods move from place to place. But also common is when a species is purposefully brought to an area, uh, so many people will bring them for the food or ornamental benefits that they provide. Species which are invasive in one area may not cause harm in others, uh, but the African tulip tree is considered invasive in many places outside of its native range, including Hawaii, Guam, Fiji, and Australia. The Global Invasive Species Database lists the African tulip tree among the 100 worst invasive alien species. In Hawaii, tens of thousands of these were planted for reforestation purposes and ornamental purposes. They were even had seeds dropped from the air, and that led to heavy infestation in some areas. The negative impact noted by the DENR in the Philippines is that the tree quickly takes over areas such as unused agricultural lots. So looking at various sources of information, which I'll link in the description, uh, the tree can multiply easily and is difficult to remove once it's established. It can spread through seed dispersal. Uh, you can see that these trees have a distinctive seed with a transparent wing that helps them to spread by a wind. And they can also grow through vegetative propagation. So it can regrow from stumps or remaining roots, which makes the manual means of removal of these trees very difficult. The tree is also shade tolerant, so it can sprout in existing forests and then uh, grow up to dominate the existing species in that forest. One thing I read was that uh, it was noted in Hawaii that the trees don't spread as easily in high altitudes above about a thousand meters. So it's likely in the Philippines that the trees aren't going to spread as easily in Baguio as in some other areas at lower elevation. And actually most of the trees that I've seen in Baguio appear to have been intentionally planted. With that said, aside from causing harm by the tree's rapid spread and displacement of other species, in some countries it's been noted that the tree is negatively impacting insect populations. Specifically in Australia and parts of South America, it's been noted that stingless bees are killed by the tree. In their native habitat, the trees are pollinated by birds and bats, and it's thought that it's possible that the trees might have a defense against uh, insects uh, to protect it from nectar robium. It was hard to find much research on the impact of the tree on bees and other insects, and much of what I found was just anecdotal. Uh, for instance, reports of beekeepers in Australia noting over a 50% drop in their hive populations if they're near flowering trees. 
And the beekeepers will actually move their hives away from these trees when they're flowering to prevent those losses. I did find one scientific study which noted a toxic effect and significant mortality when stingless bees were fed pollen or nectar from the African tulip tree. Uh, within a few days of being fed that, uh, most of the bees that were feeding on the pollen or nectar were deceased compared to a much higher survival rate of control groups. That study is free to access online, so I'll put the link in this video's description if you'd like to read it. Uh, it's also thought that it's possible that the flowers themselves could possibly contribute to insect losses as the shape of the flower could cause insects to become trapped. So the study I referred to earlier looked at species of bees from South America, but there are species of stingless bees in the Philippines as well, which are in the same tribe as the bees in that study. And uh, you can see here a nest of stingless bees that took up residence outside of my window. I've been watching them for the past few years. I was curious if the African tulip tree affected these also. Although the effect on bees isn't known as a reason for classifying the tree as invasive here. Uh, there is a tree about 200 meters or less from this nest and it's been dropping its flowers. So I thought I'd go and look and see if there are any bees inside of those flowers. So as we look beneath the tree, you can see a large number of flowers on the ground. I thought I'd look at some of the flowers to see if any deceased insects were in them. And in the first one I picked up, you can actually see a dead stingless bee. So I went through several flowers. I'll, many of them didn't contain any insects, but there was a variety of dead insects from several orders that I was finding. I decided to do a little more organized look. It's not an official study, but at least it's a little less random. So I just looked through 157 flowers and this is what I found. I was looking through the flowers, won't be able to see if bees are dying uh, after consuming the nectar, pollen, and then leaving the tree. So the mortality could be higher, but at least we'll be able to see what's in the tree's flowers and if any insects are there. Now, looking at all of the insects, there were 11 stingless bees and quite a few other species that were found. It's not a huge number of insects, but considering the number of flowers in each tree and that there could be a delay in insect death after consuming the nectar or pollen, there's potential for a significant impact. At lower elevation, I also checked some flowers that had fallen from the tree on the farm. So in those, there appeared to be many more stingless bees, and they seemed to be making up a much higher percentage of the insects that were in the fallen flowers. So I hope this video is useful, and I also hope people don't take it as being critical. Like I noted earlier, I think the plantings were certainly done with good intentions. And our practices have changed a lot over the years. I hope knowing more about this tree underscores the importance of understanding as much as possible about the environment and species that we are planting, uh, particularly when a non-native species is being considered. Many non-native species have significant benefits and it's not really logical to think that planting of native species is going to be done exclusively in the Philippines. I don't think most people can imagine or necessarily even want to see the Philippines without the non-native crops that are here, such as mangoes, avocados, or even rice, which were all introduced. Uh, but with that said, when we're planting something, we should always pause and consider what will best fit our intentions, whether those are to improve the environment, beautify a residence or to serve as a source of income. And we should consider any possible or unintended consequences of our actions. And most of all, 
uh, we should consider if what we're doing is going to help create the future world that we want to live in. So thank you again for watching, everyone. Hope you have a nice day.